Well, good evening. Um, it looks like the uh, UMAT might be broken here, but uh, that is not the case. Um, I'm trying an experiment here where I'm going to uh, cut a taper on it, and uh, this is how you do it on a UMAT. On a larger lathe, you may offset the tailstock or have a taper attachment that does it. On a Unimat, and I believe the uh, sure lines are the same way, you uh, move the head and uh, take your uh, cuts that way. So, uh, what I got here is uh, a couple of videos ago, I had uh, some uh, 1144 that I had uh, sacrificed for a, uh, a demonstration on a a tool grind and uh, well I've got another tool grind on this particular one this is a uh, roughing tool but uh, took a little extra care uh, when I ground it and uh, put a really nice polish on it and stuff it's a roughing tool but um, it acts like a finishing tool uh, anyways uh, stand by taking about two thousands per cut. Could be more aggressive, but I don't see any purpose. Apologize if the audio sounds a little bit worse. I got a fan out here going in the garage because it's uh, still kind of warm. I don't know how well this is coming out on the video, so I'll back the uh, tool up here, and uh, you can see uh, there's a definite cone forming here. Um, I took a guess uh, because I didn't quite read the uh, manual all the way through, but I believe each hash mark is uh, 10 degrees, but uh, we'll find out here after it's all said and done. This is not a critical piece, I'm just uh, whittling down this piece of 1144 that I sacrificed earlier. But if I could turn it into a uh, center or a tool or something, we'll... Uh... Okay, now I'm getting a little bit more aggressive here, so I'm going to back up on the feed just a little bit. This is 1144, so it's a little bit tougher than most of this materials. I guess this uh, blade was designed to turn. And uh, it just has one little bolt on the back side of it that uh, you tighten down in order to keep the head in its attitude. And uh, I don't think there's a flat on it, so if you get too aggressive with your cuts at too high of a... Uh, feed rate, uh, conceivably you could spin the, uh, the head. Although, they got these things set up in such a way that uh, you bind something up, the belt slips pretty easily, so. Unless you mess up really bad, they're pretty forgiving.
again, I'm taking a second aggressive cut. I should probably be a little less aggressive than this. But it's handling it, so as long as I don't spit it out of the check, I guess I'm alright. We're probably at about four thousandths depth of cut. That's a pretty happy spot. It's making a nice little velvet chip. Doesn't seem to be slowing the motor down at all. And uh, it is making a definite cone. This is a very aggressive cut here. I got my feet all the way down. not recommend that cut. It's kind of pushing the metal out in front of it, which isn't usually a good sign. As long as you keep your depth of cut relatively light and your you can go a little bit uh, harder on your feed. But since my depth was really deep, I'm uh, choosing to feather here the uh, end. And I'm managing to get to the bottom of the cut here without destroying it, which, to be honest with you, I didn't think was going to happen. So we're going to go very, very gentle coming in on this next one. And obviously there is a huge difference. These little machines will teach you finesse. You push them too hard, you'll stall them or you'll break something. Usually it's the belt though uh, that uh, is one nice feature. This is slightly more aggressive. But this is a roughing tool and it is designed to go a little bit deeper than a finish. See if I can uh, move you in onto the piece that I'm working on here. And uh, about as close in, I guess, as I can zoom you here. Um, but what we got here is a, uh, a conical feature. Um, I would estimate probably. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Pair of these right here. Hold on. Let's see. Front side is just under four millimeters. Back side is seven millimeters, so 
Um, I'll have to work out the math to see exactly what the uh, actual angle is, but um, something tells me I'm wrong on my calculations. Uh, appears to be like a uh, 20 degree or something like that. I'm not sure. So maybe they're five degrees. Um, but uh, we'll figure that out and uh, maybe make a second video where I know a little bit more about it. Uh, this is just a uh, test run here without uh, reading the actual manual. And uh, anyways, thanks for coming along on the ride.